Hey, good morning. So I'm trying to make a short video today. I've done it a couple times. My screen kept timing out and it killed it. Um, anyways, in 1 John chapter 5, at the end, John gives uh, two very short, well, actually a whole bunch of short, powerful verses for our discernment so that we can uh, test and discern what is a is somebody talking about the about Jesus the real Jesus or are they talking about some antichrist pseudo Christ made up fantasy um, doctrine of demons that's going to put me back in bondage um, and he talks about antichrist but at the end he says this is the true God after he says um, some certain things that are super important. So he says, he, he talks about these three who bear, bear witness in heaven. And he talks about these three who bear witness in the earth. And I wanted to kind of focus on, uh, at least for our discernment, talking about what is the true Jesus Christ, who he is in authenticity, the truth, the person who is the truth, and what's involved there. Because when we talk about the, the message that we've received, it involves uh, a couple different things. And these are things that we, that are in our spirit. They really are. They're truly there when we are, when we believe that Jesus died for our sins and that he rose from the dead. These are things that come naturally well, supernaturally, in the Spirit and are written in the depths of the Spirit. He is the one who gives gives discernment. And there are things that we recognize when we are first born again. But over time there are things that we need to we need to we need to grow in and we need to understand some of the details behind it so that we can not be tossed like babes and tossed to and fro, but we can grow and become mature and steady in these things and that our conscience would be clear and that our faith would be connected to that good conscience and not just faith, but knowledge, knowledge and being temperate and steadfast in this, in the truth, which is the actual truth and not a bunch of funky doctrine that people like to push out in order to make a name for themselves and beat people up. So the three things are the spirit, the water, and the blood. These three bear bear record, bear witness in the earth. And these three are one. This is the witness in the earth. So when we talk specifically about when somebody talks about Jesus Christ, when somebody says this is the truth, when somebody says this is the gospel, when somebody says this is the message that God has for you, the first, the three things that we can look at with a microscope are the spirit, the water, and the blood. These things are, are critical for mark and avoid or for fellowship or for even approving. They are things that we have to test always. And we may not understand all of the details behind it, but you'll see what I'm talking about when I, when I mention them. So the blood, the blood of Jesus paid for my sins. I have peace with God because of the blood. I have access to God because of the blood. This is a serious, serious thing. I have fellowship with God because of the blood of Jesus Christ. It really did pay for all my sins. And you can see how these would be used to say the opposite and how anybody who's saying the opposite is automatically, you are in mark and avoid territory. It's, I have nothing more to talk to you about. Now, the water, the water talks, what I, what I see it as is two things primarily, his person and his work. He is born of water. He is a man. God became a man. The word became flesh. So it's more than just saying 
when we're dealing with the truth, the word, the person of Jesus Christ, when we're talking about who he, who he is, absolutely, he is 100% God, 100% man. He lived a real human life. And there's more to that. And people, you know, there are people try and say all kinds of different things. Anyways, moving on. His work, what he's done, he had a baptism that he he went into death and rose again from the dead. This is, has been used as a picture of baptism, the water. Now, the water specifically being his work and it can be a lot more things there's it's been used so many times in the old testament and there's a very clear picture of what was accomplished he or, or what he what it is he died physically and rose again from the dead okay and the spirit so these three are one the spirit the water and the blood when you believe when you believe what Jesus has done for you, when you believe this, you receive the Spirit, which is Him Himself, Christ in you, the hope of glory. You receive the person. The Spirit is life. You're alive and you're in the Spirit. And all of these things are connected together. The Spirit, the water, and the blood. And the Spirit, so interestingly, you well, first, you have to... It is absolutely true that when you believe, just believing this record, this message that Jesus died for your sins, He, he was buried and rose from the dead. And... And the, especially these details about what it is. You have the Spirit. You have the Holy Spirit. And the message itself is Spirit. And the message is Christ Himself to come make His home, make a home inside of you. To be one with your Spirit. To fellowship with you. That's... Cannot be compromised on. There are a lot of people that want to ask, oh, did you you do this? Did you, do you really have it? Well, yeah, um, I believe in the true Jesus and I believe (laughs) he paid for my sin. I mean, yes, I'm sure. Absolutely sure. He promised it. I have the comforter. I have, I have the, I have the knowledge of the truth. So these three things are one. And anybody who comes along trying to deny one of them, that's antichrist. Mark and avoid. It's already, uh, I can't. Not just for listening to you, but fellowship. Conversation, dialogue, I'm sorry, no. Debate, forget about it. It was done. But this verse is so encouraging to me. And especially when I think about the spirit comes and the water which is him himself, the word of God, becomes a well within us, springing up and washing us and and ministering to us, refreshing us and giving us rest. This person himself, by the spirit, in these words are spirit and life, and he comes and he does this. And the blood is a reality in the spirit, washing our conscience, and the knowledge of him being being life inside of us and dwelling, being one with our spirit. All these things come back again as, in his resurrection life, in his ascended ministry as our high priest to comfort us and to touch us with deeper truth about all of the, all of the things that he's done and who he is. And uh, yeah, that's it. Okay, I hope you have a great day.